Seguin Island Lighthouse. The Seguin Island Lighthouse, built in 1857, is the tallest lighthouse in Maine. One of its earliest lighthouse keepers lived there, with only the company of his wife for many years. She was very lonely, and took to playing the piano at night, to break the silence, but her husband seemingly had no outlet for his own feelings of isolation and loneliness. Apparently driven to madness, he took an axe and bludgeoned his wife to death, before committing suicide. Many people claim to have heard the ghostly sounds of piano music floating from the lighthouse at night. Even though there's been no piano inside for many years. In 1985, a decision was made to decommission the lighthouse, and a warrant officer stayed the night to ensure all furniture and other items of value were packed and put onto a boat. During the night, the officer woke with a start. The bed he was sleeping in was shaking violently, and a voice screamed at him to get out of the building. The brave officer wasn't too perturbed by this experience, however, staying until the next day to pack up all the items he came for and send the boat on its way. Gibraltar Point Lighthouse According to legend, Gibraltar Point Lighthouse keeper J.P. Ridden Muller's refusal to share a second drink of whiskey, with a group of rowdy troops led to a fight. After the fight was over, Muller vanished, presumed dead, and never to be seen again. If several ghostly legends are to be believed, however, Muller can indeed still be seen at the lighthouse and surrounding island. Another version of the story states that, the drink of choice was beer, According to this version, Muller and two or three soldiers were having a good round of drinking, when Muller suddenly decided that enough was enough. He refused to let them have any more alcohol, leading to a fierce fight, after which Muller was buried near the water on the island. Some people have reported spotting a lonely transparent figure, aimlessly drifting around the island and lighthouse, while others have heard moaning amid the drifts of thick mist that hang over the island. to Laker Lighthouse. In a recent BBC article, several eyewitnesses detailed their ghostly encounters at the Tilaker Lighthouse in the UK. Most of the accounts include sightings of the ghost of a lighthouse keeper, pacing the walkway of the lighthouse tower, which has been out of service since the 1840s. Several also reported feeling ill after visiting the lower part of the lighthouse. One visitor describes a trip with her husband to Tilaker Beach a few years prior. There, the couple spied a lighthouse keeper wearing an old-fashioned hat and uniform, at the very top of the Tilaker Lighthouse. Though she insists the lighthouse was locked up tight, making it impossible for any human figure to be inside of it, both she and her husband spotted the figure from totally different vantage points. Another visitor at the beach was taking pictures, with her children on the lighthouse steps when her six-year-old son suddenly complained that, he was feeling sick. By the following day, he had a high fever and severe tonsillitis. Eerily, four of her five children soon came down with the same symptoms. Fortunately, upon their return home, all the children quickly became well again. It must have been quite a shock to the woman when she discovered that the lighthouse keeper had died of a fever. Souter Lighthouse The Souter Lighthouse was constructed in 1871 on Lizard Point, Marsden in northern England. It is also now known as, one of the most haunted lighthouses in the UK. Legend has it that, the niece of the famed Grace Darling, Isabella Darling, makes ghostly rounds in the Souter Lighthouse. She is known for her heroic efforts to save crew members from the sinking ship SS4 Forshara during a storm in 1838. It is not clear why Isabella haunts the lighthouse. Lighthouse staff have reported spoons floating in midair, unexplained temperature drops, and even physical interaction with some staff members who say they were pulled or grabbed by an unseen hand. Some visitors have even heard their names called by a female voice, while others have heard crying, and seen the apparition of a young girl assumed to be Isabella. Isabella isn't the only ghost, said to haunt the Souter Lighthouse, either.
Another story tells of a lighthouse waitress, who was walking down the kitchen corridor, one evening when she stopped dead in her tracks. Standing at the end of the passage, there was a man wearing a lighthouse keeper uniform. He disappeared before her eyes, leaving only the faint scent of tobacco in the air. Boone Island Lighthouse The spookiest and most tragic tale surrounding the Boone Island Lighthouse, which has seen numerous shipwrecks, and other tragedies, revolves around a woman, named Kathleen Bright. In the mid-1800s, Kathleen became the blushing bride of the lighthouse keeper, at Boone Island. She relocated to the lighthouse with her new husband, shortly after their wedding for what she surely thought would be happily ever after. From there, the story takes many twists and turns. Many stories are heard behind the incident. One version states that, the keeper drowned after he fell from the rocks, while trying to tie up the island's boat. Kathleen pulled him from the water, and dragged him all the way back to the lighthouse, where she left his lifeless body at the bottom of the staircase. She proceeded to tend to the light for five days without eating or sleeping, she was sitting on the bottom step, holding her husband's dead body. She was taken away to be cared for by the locals, but she died shortly thereafter. The spirit of Kathleen Bright has allegedly been seen by scores of local fishermen, and lighthouse visitors, who have reported a white apparition of a sad young woman. Many have also reported hearing a terrible wail coming from the lighthouse, at night and during stormy weather. A Coast Guard lighthouse keeper stated that, his dog chased a mysterious invisible entity all around the small island. Another two lighthouse keepers were shaken up when they saw the light come on inside the lighthouse, when they were both outside and no one else was on the island. 